Sometimes when people come on the show, we call it an interview. That's too formal for this. This is our good buddy Tim Roy, voice of the dubs. Hear him on 95.7 The Game all the time. We call this a visit. That way, we can call it a visitation sensation. Oh, oh. Thank you. Hello, Tim. Hello. How you doing, guys? Yeah, we're doing great. We're doing great. You're on your way to the arena right now, huh? Yeah, and uh, I can tell you that um, for years, uh, we have used uh, Bodega Bay and and in <laughs> the tides as a way to relax. Uh, I've, I've spent many, many a day there just chilling and, and enjoying life. Uh, not bad, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, okay, pretty good. I am uh, I'm con- contractually obligated to ask you this. Actually, it's not an obligation. That would be an obligation sensation. That's I'll stop. Buck. I'll stop. But no, you Dibs. Can't. Dibs challenged me. He said I wouldn't ask you this, and uh, and I will ask you this. Um, we do the, the the sensation stuff. You know that we do that to honor you. But when when Steph hit the three pointer against the Suns. A week and a half ago, Granny, do you have it? This is uh, uh, Tim. Obviously, you were there. You know what it sounded like. But but this is this is it. Curry. Okay, I called that the <laughs> next day a curry gasm. Do you have any problem with that, Tim? Uh, no, I don't care. It's it's fine. Okay. See, you <laughs> said I, I wouldn't that. ask. I asked. I yeah, I, I, mean, I thought it was a great call. Like it wasn't. You you did the call, but then you paused. But then the way you said that really captured just the idea of like how insane he is. Exactly. Yeah, he's 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 absolutely insane, and I try to remind myself uh, whenever I'm doing a game that this is really incredible. It's special, and it's once in a lifetime, and we all have to savor every second of watching him play because we'll never see you know that the like of the whole package that he has. I don't think we'll ever see that again. It's spectacular, and your calls absolutely mirror the moment. And so just want to say congrats. Keep it up. We appreciate it. And here's to many more years of it. And you think about where this team is right now, and I don't want to put championship aspirations on a team that's barely above 500, but how does this feel right now, the way this team's playing, having won 9 of 11? Well, it's really funny. The the two stretches where they had good traction and played well were the first eight games of the season and then the last few games before the All-Star break. And I think Draymond coming back from the suspension, I mean, there's no doubt that he came back refreshed. He had a good, you know, a good uh, mindset. He had cleared his mind of all the junk that was going on before and he remembered how much he enjoys playing basketball, and he's been fantastic. You know, he's an, another one that will never see the like of him again. Um, and that, along with the team getting reasonably healthy, you know, still waiting on Chris Paul coming back, but but getting guys healthy, Wiggins starting to play better. You know, the rookies are taking a better, uh, more prominent role. Kaminga's moving forward. All these things kind of factor together. Uh, to allow them to play basketball. And the way I look at the Warriors right now is that, yes, they're in the play-in bracket. Is it going to, is it, you know, impossible to get the six? No. But is it going to be really hard? You're going to have to have some help? Yes. But if I'm a team in the top half of the West, I don't really, you know, with, especially with the way they're playing right now, you know, if I'm a team up there, I don't know if I want to play the Warriors in a seven-game series. You know, is there a team atop the West that you would say automatically, oh, they're going to beat the Warriors in a a seven-game series, hands down? I I don't think there is. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of us agree with that. Tim Roy joining us here on Weather and Dibs on his way to the arena game against Charlotte tonight, which, of course, you can hear across the board on uh, on 95.7 The Game. Andrew Wiggins' comments caught my attention after the game, Tim, and, and there was one sentence where he basically said, We're figuring some things out, and it might be pretty special. If you take the first part of that, what do you think specifically it is that they've figured out? I think they figured out that, well, first of all, you know, you have to have, uh, I think Draymond at five right now is their best lineup, right? And that that means that they have to play a little differently. They have to play uh, ball movement. They have to play... Uh, a lot of uh, player movement, which they like to do, 
But I think, you know, at times this year, I thought the ball stuck too much. And I think the other part of it figuring out is, is that their young players have made strides. But Jemski is, is he's been good all year, but he's better now than he was at the beginning of the year. Kaminga is much better now than what he was at the beginning of the year. Last night, he comes down, and he's, he's the one. He's playing Draymond. He's orchestrating, hey, you got to pin down for Clay, and then you're going to get a lob, and bang, they get two points out of it because Kaminga saw that. He saw what could happen on that play. And I don't know if the beginning of the year he might have been able to see it, but I think he was a little too anxious to make something happen at the beginning of the year. So, so a lot of these things are, are, that are coming together – and, and I heard that comment as well, and uh, it was interesting because Andrew is not, you know, he's not a gregarious guy like uh, Draymond is. He's not um, a guy that's seen all the, you know, the pictures all over the year like Steph is. He's been asked a million questions. And for him to come out and say it in the way he did, that, that this could be special, that, that caught my ear as well. That, that's a very interesting comment, and I'm very excited to see where it goes. How important is it for Andrew to hear his own comments and internalize it and continue to play like he's played this last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think it's important for him to just relax and be Andrew Wiggins. And I think that um, I don't think he had a great start to the season. I think he looks better right now. He looks more focused, more centered. Uh, You know, the beginning of the year, we had a couple of games where he would go up and down the floor and you would go, okay, what's happening with Andrew? Nothing's happening right now. And so uh, I think that that's changed a little bit. I think he's battling a little bit more. I think he's like he had a really tough post-up shot last night, got defended really physically, but he fought through it and scored. Uh, so, so I think he's he's got that level of competition we saw in 2022 that maybe we didn't see at the beginning of the year. Tim, with things are rolling and somebody comes back from injury, it can be a challenge. How do you see Chris Paul fitting into all this? Well, I, I think what it, it might mean is that, you know, maybe on the guard line, you know, the uh, there'll be less minutes for, for certain guys. I think, you know, if Chris Paul is healthy, I think minutes for Quinones probably go away because Chris Paul will take those minutes. Uh, maybe... Pajemski as the second team ball handler goes away a little bit because, you know, he's Chris Paul. But I do think that, and I'm really uh, interested to see, you know, what Chris Paul out there with Clay Thompson's going to look like. Um, I think that, you know, especially with the added confidence now that uh, Trace Jackson Davis has, I'm curious to see how that works with the three of them out there because Clay and, and TJD have a, have a nice little, uh, thing going right now where clay is looking for him and so so yeah i i think there will be some minutes restrictions i think on a couple of guys but i think that's that's all part of it and I, but i am excited because you know chris paul is chris paul yeah especially a guy who can stabilize late in games where they've been a little bit uneven in fourth quarters what's your take on clay thompson early on now as a six man he had one explosive game struggled a little bit last night are you feeling that this could be a role for Clay not only this year but maybe going forward with the Warriors? Yeah, I, I I think it is. I think it could be. I think Clay is a guy that you know. He, first of all, he is a, an incredible student of of basketball, so he knows he's seen this happen before. You know, so when it happened, he mentioned guys like Ray Allen, whom he admired, and and so I think he sees there's precedent for this that that it's not just something involving Clay Thompson. I think that's important, too, because it means that, you know, Clay kind of looks at that and, and, and will accept it better. And so uh, I think it could be a great role for him because, as we know with Clay, you know, it just takes one. It takes one shot to go through, and all of a sudden, you know, the next five are going through. So uh, I think there's a, a real chance that this could be the great, you know, part of his second act in his career because he's been, you know, I think we also tend to, you know, because of the rehab process is, is so much better now than it was say 20 years ago. I think we, we kind of discount sometimes exactly what he's gone through. I mean, he's been through two, you know, catastrophic type uh, injuries that could derail anybody's career. And, 
And so for him to come back and to play at the level he's played at since he's returned, I mean, don't forget, I mean, last year, what? He had 201 threes last year. Yep. So it's there. We know what's there. And so I, I think if, if he can em- embrace that, and I think he does, I think he's got a chance to have a really great, you know, second act of his career. Yeah, Tim, what's so interesting with seemingly everybody not named Steph with the Warriors right now is we're running things through the prism of now, but also what it means for the future. And, and that's kind of my question for Clay. So maybe it is great for the second act of his career. Maybe it's great for what the Warriors need right now. But what do you think it means for free agency and what he might want going forward? You know, I don't know. That's kind of a question for Clay. That would be, you know, I don't know what he's he's looking for. I do know this about Clay, and I, I do, uh, I, I think I know him well enough to say this. I, I hope I do. That, that I think in his heart of hearts, I think he understands how special this whole thing has been, you know, with him, with Steph, and with Draymond. And I think in his in his heart of hearts, he would like nothing better than to end his career as a warrior and to be one of those guys that spends his entire career with one team. So I, I think that's I, I think that's something that in any discussion about you know the Clay Thompson's future that has to be in there. You mentioned Draymond Green. What's been your takeaway in terms of his? behavior or his attitude since he's come back from suspension? Tim, did we lose I you? Think, uh, I'm here. Okay. okay. You got me? We got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, thought, I thought maybe I'd reach my, my word limit and I was being, uh, that's it. You know, the piano music would start playing in the background and, you know, they go off the stage. So. <laughs> no, no, we're uh, not going to play you off. Uh, so yeah, for Draymond, I think, I think he's been really good because I think, you know, he's so smart. He's a really smart man. And I think he realized, you know, and I think Steve Kerr told him this too, that we, you know, you can't have you out there as, you know, a milk toast version for those who remember milk toast, uh, <laughs> of Draymond Green. Uh, so, you know, to, to be a soft version of Draymond, we need you as Draymond, but we need you as Draymond not going over the line. And so I think he's done a great job with that. And I think the best example of that was the game against Phoenix. You know, here's Nurkic trying to, you know, edge him on, trying to move him around. He, Nurkic trying to bait him a little bit. And Draymond went right up to the line and stayed there. And, and, and when he's that way, when he's got that fire, that passion to go with the intelligence that he has, that's when you get the Hall of Fame Draymond. Tim, uh, drive safe on the way there. Uh, I'm heading down there tonight with family. Can't wait to check this one out. Good chance for the Warriors to make it 10 out of 12. Uh, thanks for coming on. Have a great call. Always great to talk to you guys. And, and, and uh, Dibs, I know that you know calling your one-on-one match has really helped me in the, to be able to describe the theatrics of Stephen Curry. I appreciate that, Tim. You know, we're yeah. coming up on the uh, four-year anniversary of the disgrace at Chase, and I thought I got a bad whistle from Kalena, but I, I thought you treated me very fairly on the mic. I lost you. What? <laughs> Tim, did we lose you? <laughs> yeah. That I, Tim, that was yeah. perfect, actually. Yeah, perfect. Uh, that was perfect. Thank yeah. you, Tim. Thanks, Tim.